Hey there. Are you tired of waiting for the next episode of It's Probably Not Aliens? Well, we've got some good news for you. On Nebula, our streaming service, you can get access to all our episodes a week early. That's right. You'll never have to wait again to hear Scott and I debunk the latest ancient astronaut theory or get a movie fact wrong. But that's not all. Nebula is home to dozens of content creators we know you like, so you can find all your favorites in one place. Plus, we post content on there that you won't find anywhere else. And the best part? By signing up for Nebula at nebula.tv slash probablynotaliens, you're directly supporting the show and both of us. So don't wait any longer. Join Nebula today and listen to the next episode right after this one. Tristan, Mm -hmm. I see here that in the cold open, you have exactly one bullet point that is two words. And those two words are worm bucket. Yeah. (laughs) So should I just try to guess what that is about? Maybe. But the thing is, you might guess correctly. I don't know if you have three. I have three ideas of what worm bucket could be. Okay. Did you ever do you ever watch? It's always sunny in Philadelphia. I have not. So there's a bit where one of the characters, Charlie, has like a dream journal or something where they find uh, they find it and they try to like do something nice for him. And he just wrote the word like worm hat over again, worm hat, worm hat, worm hat. And they didn't know what it meant because there wasn't any context. Mm -hmm. So they were like, could it be? And I'm going to apply the same logic to worm bucket. Could worm bucket be a bucket full of worms? Could it be a bucket for a worm, like a bucket for a worm to use, a little bucket, little tiny bucket for a worm to use to okay. like, you know, b- bring water from a well or something? Or could it in fact be a bucket made of worms? Those are the three possibilities of worm bucket that I have, much like worm hat. You know, those in some ways, they're all wrong, but the last one is the closest to being right. Now, <laughs> now, uh, that all that raises a lot of questions also. <laughs> but what was funny about the It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode is that it turns out none of them were right. And in fact, worm hat is pronounced Vermat or something like that and was like the name of this like German guy in Charlie's dreams. Is there a chance we're talking about German people today as well? I mean, yes, but not in this case. Okay. Are Sounds you good? Okay. So here's here's what this is about. Tell me about Worm Bucket. So are you a fan of auteur filmmaker director Denis Villeneuve? Okay. This is when I come clean. I have not seen any of the Dunes. Okay. So that is that is. The, Do I need to watch the first one if I want to watch the second one? Yeah. <laughs> it's basically an adaptation of two halves of a book. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Wait. But you are putting this. You are making my mind click were we talking about the popcorn bucket (laughs) yes we are talking about the popcorn bucket so okay i thought i knew you had to have come across the worm bucket at some point i've seen this yes i I wanted to you explain it to people so i think it's amc or uh some company one of the one of the theaters one of the theaters has put out a novelty bucket for popcorn for mm. Dune Dune 2, which uh, came out, I think, last week. I haven't seen it. As be- of this recording. As it's of probably this recording. Been like a month and a half ago yeah. for, for you listeners. Uh, I haven't seen it yet because I have a toddler and uh, I need an evening where I am not busy, which doesn't exist. Mm. Um, so I'm actually going on like a short well, like mini vacation on my own in a couple of weeks. And I'm going to use part of my vacation in another city to actually watch a movie. Um, mm, so Denny, sounds good. So Denny Villeneuve's Dune come came out last week. Um, Dune two, Dune part two, Dune part two. Um, the squeakquel, the squeakquel, the continuation of uh, Zendaya's being typecasted as a woman who is unimpressed by Twink. Um, <laughs> so the role she was born to play. Yeah, that that is. 
she's being typecast. You know, sometimes it's mm-hmm. Tom Holland. Sometimes it's Timothy Chalamet. You know, they have the same energy. Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. Timothy Chalamet is like a fancy version of Tom Holland. Tom Holland mm. is like, like what's it called? Someone's like, I want Timothy Chalamet. And then your parents say, we have Timothy Chalamet at home. And then Timothy Chalamet. And then it's like Tom Holland. <laughs> it's just Tom Holland. Yeah. I've always said that Nathan Drake is just a less fancy Willy Wonka. We've all, everyone's been saying that. Everyone's been saying it. So an enter, an enter. So you know how, like when movies we've, yeah, we have not talked about this, this worm bucket. I'm sure people have seen it. When they it, put it, out it, a novelty popcorn bucket that looks like one of the by same Dune worm. Two. Yeah. And the thing is, it doesn't look so much like a thing that you eat popcorn out of. No. As much as a thing that you fuck. Yeah. <laughs> You have sex with it. Yeah. Um, And since uh, what I love, one of my favorite things about Dune, as Denny Villeneuve has been adopting it or adapting it, is that Mm. worm and adopting it. Worm, worm means he's the daddy. Yeah. As as worm daddy. um, As worm daddy, Denny. Yeah. Worm Daddy Daddy Villainer says. Exactly. Uh, but I think that uh worm posting and like the sort of like the 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 shit posting uh thing around the Dune movies has been just talking about worms, like posting worm and all that kind of stuff. So would you still love me if I was a worm? Yeah, if I was a giant worm that ate people. Mm-hmm. Uh and so and as somebody who I'm sure the internet will be extremely surprised to find out as someone who has read the six Dune novels and likes them quite a lot. What? You? Yeah. Um, uh, it's been, a, it's been a ride, but yeah, the, the, the worm, the worm bucket looks like a thing that you would fuck. Um, it is, it is a popcorn bucket that is ribbed for your pleasure. Yeah. It's quite wild. It's, it's interesting. And, and it got all the way through, like even after the memes came out when like a prototype had surfaced on the internet, they went with it and you can, you can, mm-hmm. you can buy this thing. You can buy it. It is a thing Good that you luck. can purchase. Apparently, apparently it's, I've, I've been reading that it is so uh, hard to get a hold of now. And I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be, uh, what's it called? They're being bought out by adamandeve.com for, um, for future <laughs> redistribution. Oh, what a collab that would have been. Yeah, uh, Fleshlight, if you're listening, look at this. This one's all you. This one's on you. If you if you don't jump on this opportunity, uh, I'll be surprised. Uh, Denny Villeneuve, if you want a new sponsorship opportunity, a new way to merchandise Dune, mm-hmm. uh, Adam, go to Fleshlight. <laughs> go to Fleshlight.com slash Dune 2. I don't know if that's, that's definitely not a wet, real website. No. Uh, or if it is, give us money. Um, anyways. It, they're definitely not the, not the sponsor of this episode. No. Although, Could be. <laughs> if you are Denny Villeneuve and you're listening to this podcast or you are a uh, fleshlight. First of all, <laughs> s- very sorry I haven't seen any of your worm movies yet. That's on me. Uh, yeah. Sardaukar throat singing. Top tier. Top tier yeah. thing. And also enjoying. Enjoying it. I also am mm. excited for when this series does so many good numbers that you are forced to adapt the entirety of the Dune saga, including mm. the final three. Okay. That are a combination of confusing and horny, okay. but in an uncomfortable Ooh. way. <laughs> oh. Um, hmm. And we learn that, I, I and like I, you can pinpoint the part where, I don't know if this for sure, but it definitely feels like the point when uh, Frank Herbert is going through a divorce because there's like a part in the series where it's like, basically women are, women, am I right, are ruining the entire <laughs> galaxy or the entire universe through sex women um oh can't get enough of these sandworms at that point i think the sandworms are almost extinct uh oh. keep in mind the dune the six dune novels take place over a period of literally thousands of years so i don't know anything about them tristan i've not read the books and I've, I've not seen the movies i don't know anything <sighs> I'm so sorry. All right. So now this is the Dune cast where I'm going to teach Scott how Dune works. Um, teach me how Dune works. You're the new Dune daddy. Dune daddy. You're the worm daddy. Long story short, 10,000 years in the future and yeah. uh, we banned computers. No, 20,000 years in the future. We banned computers because the computers rose up against us and we um, mm. we decided that computers were done. But that means computers that. bad. Yeah. But then in order to keep being a sci-fi society, they decided that the answer to that is to fill in all the places that would be computers with 
with drugs. And so oh. the your computer is called a Mentat. He's a guy who does drugs that makes him really good at math. Okay. That's sort of going back in time, though, because the, the original com- computer, the term was originally a job description. That, that is was true. What a per- that's a person. It was, is a com- the per- people were the first computers, literally. Yeah, there's a lot of women doing secretarial work and um, or doing mm-hmm. at least like, you know, clerical work. And um, and I don't know if they were doing super meth, basically, to do math like they do in Dune. Mm. But, but the other part is that to travel faster than light, you need to be able, like, you move so fast. And in order to not, like, die, you have to kind of be able to tell the future. Uh, you have to be able to oh. see the future. And in order to do that, you have to ingest a fuckload of More drugs. a drug called Spice okay. that lets you see the future. The oh, problem, though, nice. is that Spice cannot be replicated synthetically and only exists oh. in a natural environment on a single planet and that planet is a complete desert and is filled completely yeah it's filled with worms okay uh worms that, i'm getting that, it yeah that's like that that is like the, the 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 central setup of dune and then okay and also because of the lack of computers everything has turned into like a feudal system so it's got like mm-hmm. dukes and barons and stuff and there's also a, a whole eugenics program being run by secret witches that are trying to make a person who can see the future mm. and then they do that accidentally but then it turns out to be one of the worst things that humanity's ever done oh, man. <laughs> and that person is denny villain <laughs> or not that person is timothy chalamet <laughs> that person is <laughs> wonka yeah willy wonka that, that, that they, didn't do a, they didn't do a wonka bucket willy Did wonka they? is the kwisatz haderach you've heard it here first everyone the one who can i don't know what that means once. We should start the episode at some yeah, point. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm I'm gonna get deep into Dune lore if you if you don't we stop me. We cannot let Tristan get too deep into Dune lore. This is a podcast about aliens. The worms are like aliens, yeah. Right? It's a different planet. This is a podcast about ancient astronaut theory and uh, pseudoscience, pseudo history, and we look into uh, the sh- the TV show Ancient Aliens, and we debunk their claims while teaching you about real life history history of people and places and things and uh concepts i guess in this episode we're talk we're we're trying so hard to avoid talking for like th- the th- second month in a row about more nazis we're on this kick mm-hmm. my name is scott nicewander i know nothing i think i've made that pretty clear i don't know what dune is i'm tristan johnson and i'm the one who's been selectively bred for thousands of generations in order to be able to unlock the ancestral memories of both the female and male sides of my background and in doing so oh. can perfectly predict the future and will do so in order to become something that is described in the canon books as millions mm-hmm. of times worse than Hitler. Whoa. <laughs> you're like, a, you're going to be like a million Hitlers. Yeah. I'm going to create a jihad that will, cr- uh, that will burn a fire across the known universe. Oh, that's no good. Yeah. It's not great. And also my kid's going to become a giant worm person. Mm. Um, I haven't told him about that yet but he does become one with the worm eventually well and it, it, puberty puberty is yeah, weird the, the worm comes for us all speaking of hitlers <laughs> Speaking of Hitlers, fortunately, Earth's history has only ever had one Hitler. We have not unleashed Paul Muadiba past um, upon humanity yet. So you can't. You gotta stop. This doesn't means nothing to me, Tristan. <laughs> the whole trick of the book is that they don't explain anything. So you are also just tossed in with a bunch of words that you don't know. And the whole idea is you pick it up as you move along. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, today we're going to talk about the swastika. Um, that is that is the thing that that I decided yep. uh, because otherwise known as a worm bucket. That's probably. <laughs> Probably can't say that. If you think about it, it kind of looks like two wiggling worms. It kind of looks like two wiggling worms. Although that's kind of mean because we'll get into it. The symbol is. Uh, I know. I understand. I shouldn't have said it. <laughs> I knew that it was a different. Yeah. A actu- different actual good thing before Hitler took it. On that note, there actually is a semi funny story that I heard on. I think it was like the moth or like one of those storytelling podcasts mm-hmm. about uh, this wedding that was happening where uh Indian woman, Jewish man mm-hmm. are having a wedding. Okay. And uh, because Indians have like really big and elaborate weddings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The the bride's family decides to take over organizing the event because mm-hmm. weddings in India are like multiple day affairs. Yes. Uh, but that means that that uh, decorations and stuff were not uh, like, you know, was completely taken over by them. And so when the, you know, groom to be shows up to inspect the place before, like, you know, the day before the wedding notices mm. that his, his, you know, his Jewish family is coming and that the wedding place is covered in swastikas. Mm. Uh, 
mm. uh, which led to some very quick um, redecorations. Oh goodness! Uh, and we'll under we'll get into kind of why that is a whole thing today. That that yeah, the swastika. We're, but uh, I guess we should this, probably start with saying what millions of people run. <laughs> oh yes. All right. How does this swastika relate to aliens? Let me hit my little sound thing. It's at least enthusiastic to push the the sound button. <laughs> What do they believe this time? What do the people believe about the swastika and aliens? So according to this, millions of people around the world believe that Nazi leadership were obsessed with studying the advanced, hyper-powerful technology of ancient India. We already know about Vimanas. We know about the nukes, the Brahma weapons. So obviously, they, the, the Nazis were aware that the aliens had been in contact yeah. and were obsessed with studying it. To the point where they adopted the symbol uh, of oh. the swastika from mm-hmm. ancient Hindu uh, symbology because they wanted to also be connected with this symbol of extraterrestrial beings like the Hindu god Brahma. Mm. And so yeah. they decided that if you look around the world, you also see that the, the swastika shows up to indigenous people as being connected to extraterrestrials and that it could ward off evil and give you power. And so that Hitler decided this symbol would give him power. Power, and that there was like it was supposed to connect him with the extraterrestrial and these ancient societies to build the next big powerful society. Mm. It's very funny to me how much and we've talked about this in a couple episodes now about how much of this stuff is like stuff that we've covered already. Like we've talked about Brahma weapons and and, and stuff like that, too. Uh, and just yeah, yeah, it's it's f- Interesting how it's all connected in a in a weird way. There's a cinematic universe. There is the there is a, a c- <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. Yes. There is some deep like ancient aliens lore for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. So here's the idea. All right. Let's get deeper into this. Let's let's be a little sandworm and dig deep into the planet. I, yeah. I assume that's what they do. I don't know. They eat harvesters and they hang they, they go in the sand. Okay. Let's 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 get our hooks into this worm and ride it through the Coriolis effect desert into the deep deeper uh story here sure so the coriolis storm sorry by putting our hook in its gills anyways um the claim okay, so let's, yeah. let's get into like a little more detail so basically the, according to the nazis had thought that there was extraterrestrial influence as part of the you know uh the idea that the nazis had connections to ancient aliens or extraterrestrials mm-hmm. often including the idea that the the symbol is due to its ancient origins and its link to extraterrestrial civilizations yeah. and that this is part of their overall you know story they have that the nazis Nazis were searching for ancient relics and lost civilizations, and they believed that they were trying to find an ancient homeland of Thule, which would have incredible powers that, again, probably is the place where, like, the Aryans came from, which also, like, you know, from space and, like, that they're aliens. Yeah. I, just listen to the last couple of episodes that we've done about a lot of this stuff. It's all connected as we try and debunk you know mm-hmm. ancient aliens and nazi stuff this is a lot of I'll stuff you we all touched know, on. just so that you guys can yeah. uh feel a little bit better in two episodes i'm taking a nazi break and we're gonna do something we're gonna take a different. break just again but, but just to sort of say this is it's all this is all everything you're saying is sort of stuff that we've covered in previous episodes just to like catch people yeah up. As we muck through basically this episode about ancient aliens and the like from ancient, we are literally like covering it episode by episode and we're going through an episode called Aliens and the Third Reich. And that's why we've been in like Nazi mode for like the last like two months. Yes. Yeah. Anyways, so ancient aliens speculates that the Nazis uh, were interested in this and in doing so, they established like a base in Antarctica and mm-hmm. that there was like an ancient civilization underneath the ice in Antarctica. And basically all of it is built towards like the swastika was their attempt to make a connection with this ancient civilization. Right. When I looked into like where this story comes from, like where the story that they had these beliefs come from, we find actually a mix of different things. A lot of different places that believed in like various esotericisms and mm-hmm. and pseudoscience and uh, just like post-war reinterpretations of Nazism. So I'm going to try and go through some of these quicker because we've covered a lot of this ground already, but I'll give a brief thing because not everyone listens to every episode. So yeah. one of the biggest people to talk about this to make this connection between like the swastika and space and aliens is a French born Greek philosopher by the name uh, or Greek writer by the name of Sav- uh, Savitri Devi, who was a big proponent of the idea of esoteric Nazism. So like the first place mm-hmm. this comes from is esoteric Nazism, which we did an entire episode on. Yeah. But uh, is basically a idea of mystically reinterpreting the Nazism and involving or the Nazis and using the swastika as a sort of 
sim- like a spiritual symbol and shows like the the extraterrestrial origins of the Aryan race. Mm-hmm. The other term for it is esoteric Hitlerism, uh, because right. some proponents have talked about how they believe that Hitler was literally like the avatar of like gods like Vishnu and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Real fun stuff. Real fun. Yeah. And this like was part of esoteric Nazism, which was this blending of Nazi ideology with other beliefs at the time, like mysticism, white nationalism, and neo-Nazism to make this sort of weird occult type thing that we are basically responding to and is basically the intellectual origin of a lot of UFO and ancient astronauts conspiracy theories. And hey, we're back. (laughs) We're here. We caught up to modern day. Yeah. Uh, The other place this comes from is the the proliferation of uh, UFO conspiracies that uh, have to do with the Nazis in the 1960s. Authors started spreading tales of Nazi UFOs that linked them to the occult Mm. or and or aliens uh, that and this is where like uh, these books Books that you know when we had the new age movement in the 1960s but also just like an increase in interest in ufo stories people started mm-hmm. publishing because you know nazis also sell books they would write stories about how sure. the nazis had all these connections to the supernatural or to space or or whatever and so that sort of cemented itself in lore one of the biggest proponents that the nazis had alien connections was a person by the name of ernst zundel who i'll talk about a little bit later but we talked we also yeah. briefly mentioned he was a prolific I was say German yeah. Canadian Holocaust denier. Mm-hmm. And the other one being another person we discussed who is Miguel Serrano, who is a Chilean diplomat who published the basically like the seminal works on esoteric Hitlerism that was a trying right. to intertwine extraterrestrial stuff, but also Nazi ideology and the occult. Mm-hmm. And since these ideas came out, they've evolved over time and incorporated other elements from ancient astronaut theory, but also other parts of uh, pseudoscience and speculative history, and then get picked up once it's been laundered from enough sources that you can no right. longer be like, this is a weird neo-Nazi belief. And it's just part of the general milieu of weirdness uh, in the sort of esoteric space or in the like, UFO space or whatever, then it gets picked up by shows like Ancient Aliens who don't do the due diligence of finding out the sources of the things that they are trying to show on the show. And then they put it on TV for us all to be um, inundated with. Yeah, I mean, this goes back to what you were talking about, how, you know, Nazis sell books like th- that's also that was the History Channel. And we talked about this. We've, we've talked about this so much. But like, yeah, the History Channel, the big two money makers are World War Two slash Nazis and ancient aliens. And yeah. so th- th- they've combined them together. And that's why we're we're here. It's stuck in our our this arc, this weird arc of, of the podcast. See, you know, remember like last year when everyone was talking about how men always think about the Roman Empire or whatever. Yeah. So I don't. And we talked about it as as discovered then. But I always thought that that's it was more about World War II. Like yeah. so many like dads think about World War II this is true. a lot. There's like this whole thing where um I think there's this meme that went around for a bit where it's just like when a man becomes a dad, mm-hmm. he has two choices of what he is going to get into. He's either going to get weirdly into World War II as if like all dads are secret studying for some world war two test that they're going to have in the future uh-huh. or they get really into smoking meat those are those are like oh. the two kind of ways you could go down okay and you're uh i imagine like judging how you uh you're a you're a former vegetarian i don't know which one you're going to choose who knows world who war knows? two or meat what do, what do the I'm vegetarian on, dads do i'm on this podcast and There's i'm some- learning a lot about world war two <laughs> Do you like smokers? Like meat smokers? Yeah. I love a good smoked meat. The thing is that in my house, like the the genders are reversed in this area. So like Mm. um, my wife is the barbecuer. Mm. Uh, So, and I have been considering a smoker as a gift when I have money to buy a smoker. Oh. Because I feel like she would enjoy that a lot because as someone who's from the Midwest, she loves crock pots and slow cookers. And yeah. if you think about it, what is a what is a smoker but a slow cooker barbecue? That is true. <laughs> also, if you're not into meats, if you're like a vegetarian, smoke some potatoes, make a potato salad out of it. Oh, it's delicious. Mm. It's the best potato salad you'll ever have. Or make chipotles. Make chipotle. I found out that I, I found myself randomly reading an article about jalapenos for some reason and i found out that a full 20 percent of jalapenos harvested get turned into chipotles and i was like that's a that's more than i expected that's a lot yeah good stuff is reading an let's ar- just talk yeah. about smoking foods now what if we pit what if we hard pivoted this podcast next week we're like nazis 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 and then how to make next the perfect week, brisket s- how to make brisket <laughs> yeah 
I mean, all if, right, everyone, you got your kielbasa ready. Just like it's like live, you like like what's it called? You smoke it for three hours. The podcast is three hours long, and we just talk while you are sitting by your smoker, so that you can have like mm. it's like having it's like uh, when you're barbecuing at a party and you have someone to talk to while you're like, oh, it's time for you to flip it over. What if that's uh, that's what that's what you can imagine every time you listen to this episode. Just imagine that Tristan and I are having these conversations while we wait for for our smokers to smoke some good meats. Yeah. We're around the smoker right now, Tristan I'm, and I, and we're just talking about World War Two. We're the best of both dads. Yeah, we're drinking beers and uh, talking mm-hmm. and, and smoking meat, which is weird because that this usually is exactly where I end up every time I'm at a party. Um, because, smoking meats? Well, you smoke meat at a party? No, but but, uh, but talking about random shit like. This. I brought my own meat to smoke to this party. This is a B- BYOM. Yeah, B- bring your own meat to smoke. Um, <laughs> no, but like um, now that like the podcast has broken social containment in my house, like my YouTube channel never really caught on with my friends. I don't really I don't think many of my friends watch my YouTube videos. Sure. But the podcast, definitely. I have several friends who listen to the podcast. And so when I go to parties and they are there and they are, it's like their job to introduce me. The podcast is one of the first things that comes up and it's a thing that people mm. take an interest in so i very quickly find myself talking about either ufos or nazis <laughs> at parties uh because you know me once i start if I you want to fix that just bring a bring a bring a big stack of raw meat that's true then people will be like what's up with the raw meat guy <laughs> just waiting sitting around waiting for a smoke i thought there was gonna be a smoker here i'm sorry uh i right. know this was also a byos party um okay <laughs> so the reason why people care about this this swastika connection is yeah. that uh it, it it's it's it intertwines a bunch of interesting stuff you know people who are into pseudo history there's an angle there people who are into conspiracy theories this is like a hidden narrative that they don't want you to know about and also yeah. it adds uh it, it adds a little bit to the sort of enduring mystery that surrounds the fact that like why did the third reich do the things that it did and are aliens to be part of it how do we understand it cuz i think that like one of the things that were that keeps the nazi regime in our heads as a cultural force is just the lack of comprehension for how they believed the things they believed. How did something yeah. so abhorrent to humanity actually how come did it get that far? How did how did it do all? Yeah, yeah. How did, how did how did all this happen? And the swastika has an unfortunate history because it began as a symbol of good fortune and well being in lots of cultures, but today in a lot of Western countries, it has now become unambiguously a symbol of hate and anti semitism. Yes. To the point where I think one of the reasons also why the swastika came up as a thing is that the swastika, I think, is one of the symbols that I that still has the capacity to shock, even like, you know, 70, 80 years on. Like, it's one of those things where like when you see it, if you see it in public, like it's like, holy shit, like like, there's still like it still has an impact on people in a way that a lot of other symbols don't. And I think that that is uh, powerful and it draws attention. And that's why a lot of people want to be able to make some sort of bigger connection out of it because there's this sort of uh, thought in like cons- the sort of mental heuristics of conspiracy is that mm. big things must have big causes. Mm. And that, and that's sort of part of it. And uh, also it has like you know, a lot of, con- like it has, because it's a symbol that's shown up in the religious and spiritual culture of a lot of different places. It also is a really good connective piece for those who are interested in the supernatural and the occult and mm-hmm. who are into Nazism. A- and also it, it allows for like you to, if you're conspiracy minded, tie Nazism into this larger story of humanity mm. which is not great uh but not it, but good. it but it does it is like one of the most provocative things that people can use to point to to show why the nazis might have had an interest in the occult and in spiritualism and mysticism and stuff like that because they adopted such a spiritual symbol okay it, the big people who are involved with it again ernst zundel who is, was born in germany died in 2017 was a neo-nazi and a holocaust denier he moved to canada in 1958 where he became a prominent neo-Nazi and Holocaust denier. Uh, he was deeply anti-Semitic, not surprisingly. Mm. And he had, this, yeah, I was going to say, does not surprise me. Yeah. And was a, a big promoter of the idea that Jews were running the world and he venerated Hitler and in Nazi Germany. So it's not just like everyone that I disagree with as a Nazi or something like that. Right. He's most notable in Canada because he was one of the biggest 
like because Canada has uh, hate speech laws. Our, okay. The Canadian Constitution does not like it actively says that it, it, it does not protect speech. Like our free speech does not extend to hate speech. OK. And one of the biggest tests was when the court brought up Ernst Zundel on hate speech stuff because like they wanted to no not let him publish his books and stuff like that. Mm. In 1985 and 1987, he got convicted of these. But although later on, he did have his conviction overturned by the Supreme court lots of lots of interesting story I, I i don't know how much i should get into it but like uh there's some parts where like i have a personal connection to this case because i used to work for right the organization that defended ernst zundel in this because it was like sort of the canadian equivalent of the aclu okay and you know how like the aclu would do something like that right yeah i kind of I, I and i know but like the thing is like that sounds horrible but i know like a lot of the and a lot of them very jewish lawyers who like who fought to do this defense on the grounds of like protecting constitutional rights in Canada. It's a complicated uh, situation. It's very complicated. All you need to know is Tristan Johnson, staunch Ernst Zundel defender. No, I'm not even, I don't, I don't, I don't even agree with that organization on their stance on free speech. Uh, I, I have a different concept of free speech than like the sort of, uh, like, well, we can't go down that ACLU rabbit. Version. Yeah. We can't go down that wormhole, yeah. rabbit hole, worm, worm stuff, trying to, trying to, to bring us back to worms. Yeah. For all of his hatred and his uh, spreading of like vile ideologies, he was eventually deported from Canada and sent to Germany in 2005, where uh, the Germans, because also, you know, saying Nazi shit is also a crime uh, in Germany, sure. as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, so he ended up being convicted in 2007 for the crime of inciting racial hatred and defaming the memory of the dead and did five years in prison. Okay. But what a real cool dude. Yeah. But one of the things that he did do is that in the 19th 1970s, he tried to like launder Nazi ideas. And in the 1970s, UFOs were really popular. Huge. Yeah. People loved them. So he started publishing books under the pseudonym of Christoph Friedrich. And one of his books was called UFOs, Nazi Secret Weapon? Question mark. Mm. See, I love it. This is taking the page from Eric Von Daniken. If you just put a question mark at the end of your title, then again, it's this, it's the classic thing we always talk about on this podcast where it's just like, hey, whoa, I'm not stating anything. I'm just asking questions. Yeah. I'm just asking questions. Exactly. Nazi Secret Weapon? Chariots of the Gods? You decide. This, this, this question mark is my plausible deniability. And I will cash that in. <laughs> In this book, but also others, he made claims that flying saucers were uh, Nazi secret weapons launched from an underground base in Antarctica and that the Nazis were the action. It wasn't aliens, but Nazis who were making all the advanced technology that we were seeing in the skies. OK, and then uh, get your story straight, everyone. Yeah. And that there might be connections to extraterrestrials. But it's like they, these aren't aliens. Obviously, it's like the people were like, these aren't aliens. They're angels. And it's like, no, they're not aliens. <laughs> oh, they're okay. Nazis who are uh, operating from their secret base in Antarctica, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which then. And like he's like one of the major contributors to this broader uh, connection between the Nazis and UFOs and the speculation that they had all these connections and the occultism and all that kind of stuff. So he has been uh, popular with like the Nazi UFO space, but also he's one of the no. most prolific and well-known Holocaust deniers in history. And mm -hmm. um, his publications are still cited by people uh, showing that he has had a lasting impact on yeah. everything. There's also, cool. yeah, there's also the case of Miguel Serrano, who we talked about in episode 117, mm -hmm. uh, who is that's the, where we finish the fight. Yeah. That's what I made a joke about in that episode. Yeah, he's the big guy behind the idea of esoteric Hitlerism and the whole. Yep. Hitler being the 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 avatar of Vishnu, which you can imagine then because like the swastika is an important part of Hinduism and Indian Dharmic religions that he would have made that connection as well. And the last one, and this mm. is a weird one, um, and uh, I think I decided that I was going to make it its own episode altogether because I feel like it's a thing that we just need to okay. do a bit on. But another like sure. if, if we're going to talk about UFOs and the swastika, we can't avoid talking about the Raelians. So what is that? So the Raelians, the uh, thing is, like, I realize that they 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 aren't like a super big deal in America because no, Raelians really, never heard of this. So Raelians are a cult. They're a UFO cult, but their 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 founder Rail uh, is okay. I think he's still alive. He is French, so he's from France. 
but it means that like the, red flag already. Yeah. But the Raelian cult is uh very popular in or it is a, at least like by cult standards, it's sure. more popular in the Francophone parts of the world. So the reason why mm. I know about Raelians is because they have a a contingent in Quebec. Um mm. and in like kind of French speaking Canada. But because America doesn't really have that French cultural tie very much. No, not until you get to Nolens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that like the Raelians are also not like they're also popular in Japan and they're they're a strange group of people. Like one of the things that they wanted to do is their symbol is the most provocative and frankly, grotesquely insensitive thing ever, which is a symbol of a swastika inside a Star of David. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, don't do that. Oh no! Um. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, and their whole their whole idea behind it is that it's an ancient symbol of peace and harmony, and they want to bring they want to kind of rehabilitate the symbol in that sense. But the general belief is, by Raelians is that there was a race of aliens called the Elohim that uh hmm. that have like tried to um they're basically responsible for genetically engineering humanity and they have tried to like they they cloned humans basically and so the mm. Raelians at their peak were like they had a non-profit called clone aid where they were trying to raise money to improve the science of human cloning and stuff like that clone aid clone aid yep oh god um but they have like they have been very public in trying to dissociate the the swastika from its Nazi connotation. Also, well known for being an extremely horny cult. They are like they're really into free oh. love. Free love is like a super huge part of the Raelians. Okay. They're kind of a weird mix of um that's extremely well, insensitive and some, also they got some bad. Yeah, they are they are yeah. very much a mixed bag of of things. As far as cults go, uh like I think there's like been a recent, a more recent documentary on Netflix about them or something like that. Uh so I don't know if like there's probably some like dark secret shit that has come out recently but like the last i remember checking in on them they were like a sort of like weird fringe cult that believes a bunch of ufo stuff but also they're just kind of like they just like fucking each other i guess okay uh sure yeah but again i think we're gonna have to do our own episode on the raelians because we got to super now connected. we have to yeah. now <laughs> like i mean they have their whole entire own ancient aliens theory and they're funky in a very interesting way and the leader of the raelians um i think you want to look him up because he looks like the uh he looks kind of like the um he always makes me think of the racist version of the mandarin that they did in iron man oh i see yes oh i think i found him because he looks sort of like he has gallagher hair yeah he kind of he sometimes he kind sometimes has a man bun and he sometimes looks like like he has dog ears like if bob ross decided to become a clown um he looks like his hair is fluffy dog ears yeah basically like from a border collie <laughs> that's what his hair looks like his hair looks like border collie ears precisely yeah wow incredible yeah uh, there's a lot of all right fun. we have to do an episode of it though yeah it's pretty wild i i i would definitely love to do research on the raelians i did a video on step back about the raelians like a thousand years ago um so i'd be love to come back and see what they've been up to yes please but yeah, dig, uh, digging into this thing, though, I tried to like, oh, OK, how do I debunk these claims? And then it's like, well, um, it's pretty easy to show that there is a clear lineage of it was invented by Nazis in the 60s. And there's literally mm -hmm. no evidence to show this whatsoever. The only th way I can really debunk it entirely is to just tell you that we know why the Nazis adopted the swastika. And I can just tell you that. No, I would love to know that. That sounds like really important information. Mm -hmm. But at first, I need to tell you about a very quick thing about product. Oh, and what about or service? service. Oh, OK, service as well. OK, yeah, let's do it. Some good product. That was some good product. It was a pretty okay service. You know, I'd say service was pretty good too. Mm -hmm. It's probably no Nebula. So, uh, yeah. so great, sir. Honestly, best service. Best service. Good service. Yeah. So let's 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 do into like I think the best way to debunk these claims that the you know that the Nazis adopted the swastika because of its connection to space and aliens is to tell you what the swastika is actually. Yes, please. And how it ended up being the symbol of the Nazi party, and yeah. uh, and that'll be the best thing. So yeah, I think we've sort of danced around it a little bit that it de I mean I feel like most people know that it had meaning and significance before the Nazi party yeah it was a symbol there was a there was uh, and it has been renamed to this point, but there was Swastika Ontario um, at a certain mm. point in our history. 
Uh, I don't know what Swastika Ontario uh, is. Please be a fun name. You know how a bunch of towns got themselves like renamed during World War One and World War Two because they were associated with Germany? Sure. At least that happened here. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm just agreeing with, I'm a very agreeable person. And I just realized something, which is that uh, there isn't, it didn't get renamed to anything because it still exists and it is still called Swastika oh, no. Ontario. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. Um, apparently, it, it was founded in 1908 and it is uh in it is uh yeah it's it's been frequently noted on the list of unusual place names <laughs> So that wasn't even that. It's not even like it was super historic then. If it's 1908, it had only been around for like 40 years less than before World War II. Just change the name. <laughs> Mostly, I think the reason why it hasn't been changed is because uh, the entirety of the town and town is an extremely uh, special way to call it. The entire town is 1.21 square miles or 3.14 kilometers squared. Gotcha. So, uh, and, and also I, I'm learning here and this is very fun. I remember this. I remember seeing this because, um, they tried to do like a swastika, like branded thing, uh, during, no. I think it was like during world war two, but one of the things, uh, because they had like a sign for, I think like their hockey town or something like hockey team or something like that. Sure. But, uh, they're, they replaced, they got rid of the swastika sign and they were talking about Good. replacing it and renaming the town to Winston. But then the residents removed the Winston sign and replaced it with the swastika sign with the message to hell with Hitler we came up with our name first wow yeah talk about reclaiming it mm -hmm. uh, it had a um, it did have a rail station at one point but it doesn't anymore uh, or it's abandoned and as of today Swastika has approximately 500 people living in it so it's like not really much of a place it's not a it's not a high priority to to fix it no um, but outside of the small town in Ontario um, yeah the Swastika is an ancient did, did it originate before Ontario to hell with Hitler <laughs> I, Ontario yeah to hell with Swastika Ontario a lot of people came up with it first okay um, it's an ancient symbol one of the most ancientest symbols and it has there's a lot mm. of evidence that it it has evolved independently in multiple places because it's basically a spiral uh, and has shown up sure. in various different cultures and different reasons it's a spiral with right angles yeah so we see things like uh, we see it in Eurasia but we also see it in Africa we see it in Native American spiritual stuff but uh, but the biggest place where it shows up is in India. Mm -hmm. uh, its design is, of course, being a cross with arms of equal length bent at right angles, uh, which is seen as, quote, a chiral irregular icosagon. Whatever that means. Don't know. I Kasagon. A Kasagon. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the word swastika comes from the Sanskrit word svastika, which means good fortune or well-being. Mm. Uh, before Adolf Hitler, it was used for 5,000 years and is one of the core symbols used in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Jainism to be a symbol of divinity, spirituality, and auspiciousness. Uh, I think sometimes it's used as a reference to, to uh, reference samsara, which is sort of the eternal cycle of, of death and reincarnation within these religions mm -hmm. but also it did have a uh a, 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 a significance in europe as well european cultures including the greeks and the celts but also anglo-saxons used it as a pretty common symbol and even showed up in ancient mesopotamia so like again everywhere everywhere people couldn't get enough of this shape mm -hmm. the navajo and the hopi had uh swastikas that symbolized concepts like life and prosperity mm -hmm. uh and today it's in a really complicated situation because it's like one of the most most important symbols to a religion that has like two of like the five major religions on earth have it as one right. of their main symbols and in several countries it's illegal because it is a symbol of yes. hate and anti-semitism which makes shit super complicated <laughs> Super complicated to navigate. Yeah. Um, so this is how the Nazis came aboard with it. The Nazis took the swastika symbol because it had associations with Aryan identity and Germanic history. Like they basically looked at that ancient European stuff and were like, oh, this is a thing that we can use. Because at the start of the 20th century, the swastika was typically designed to be a symbol of good luck. You okay. can see it in old churches. You can see it in like a bunch of things that show like it's supposed to be just a good luck symbol. Like a four leaf clover. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it had been picked up by the Volkish movement in Germany, which was this nationalist 
uh, movement, like this uh, attempt to build a German nation or a German national identity. This is something, yeah, we've talked about this in previous episodes. That was a huge part of, you know, the rise of the, of the Nazi party. Yeah. And a lot of like neo-Nazis today, there's like a almost schism between like Nazis who are like super Christian and those who have kind of gotten into like the Volkish movement and try to embrace more like old Teutonic pre-Christian pagan stuff. Mm -hmm. So in this sort of period, because uh, we're talking about like the early 20th century, late 19th century, you have uh, Germany trying to create a country where there hadn't been a country before. And right. the Volkish movement was an attempt to do that, to build a, a German nationalism that hadn't existed before. And mm -hmm. the swastika was one of the symbols that they picked up as part of it. Hitler was inspired by this and adopted the swastika for the party in 1920, him personally designing the flag to have a black swastika on a white circle with a red background. He personally designed it? Or that was his idea, like the, the sort of color combination, I guess, because I guess you, black, yeah. black, white, and red were basically the colors of the old German flag, like the imperial German sure. flag. Sure. So that it had significance. It's very strong. Yeah. According to Hitler, he believed that the swastika was supposed to represent the victory of the Aryan man and the ideal of racial purity, which was the basic a core of Nazi ideology. They formalized this in the Salzburg Congress, which happened on August 7th, 1920, which made it the official emblem of the party. And then, mm. uh, and, and the reason why he chose this symbol was because of the, the, the Aryan idea of the racial purity, but also because he wanted to create a powerful and iconic symbol that would rival the other powerful and iconic symbol that was dominating politics at the time, that of the sickle and hammer. Uh, the symbol of uh, that represented the Soviet Union and communist parties around the world. I'm just like imagining Hitler on in Canva trying to come up yeah. with <laughs> the, a new symbol yeah. that is striking. And I mean, I, I think that they the symbols both work mm. for their intended purpose because the idea of the swastika being this symbol of racial purity and and such contrasted as opposition to the Soviet sickle and hammer symbol to represent the unification of workers, both those in the like both agricultural workers and industrial workers coming together yeah. for a unified purpose, which does mm. seem very much like what communism represented and what fascism represented. And I think that another one of these things that is part of why they want to find this alien connection is because and I think that, you know, you can your Ben's your Ben's Shapiro will also try to do this mm -hmm. is that they want to distance this central concept of the Nazi party, which was that it was fanatically, fiercely anti-communist. And the reason why it got so powerful so fast was because there were a lot of people in German society, specifically the richer part of it, who were terrified of communism and that there was the, the lack of action against Hitler. And the way that fascism branded itself was that they were the bulwark of Western civilization against communism. Mm. And, and talking about how Nazism was so fiercely anti-communist is uh, really awkward when then after the war was over, America started positioning itself yeah. as being fiercely anti-communist. Yeah, that makes it very complicated to explain to, <laughs> to, to people, mm -hmm. which I think is also probably why a lot of people like your Ben Shapiro and, and others try to, you know, uh, make the argument that like, well, you know, Nazis... It's socialist was in their, you know, th th their title. They mm -hmm. were basically communists. Yeah. So America was fighting communists by fighting the Nazis when you think about it. Yeah. Uh, that, it, and also, yeah, just like trying to distance the far right from, yes. Like, like trying to, like basically, it's the right trying to distance themselves from the logical, the logical, uh, the logical conclusion of their belief stress system. Um, especially right. those like Ben Shapiro, who is of Jewish ancestry, who might be uncomfortable with the fact that. That, um, his entire political ideologies and goal is extremely anti-Semitic, but that's a whole different mm. thing. You have these cousins with Mara Wilson, Mara Wilson. I did know that you've unlocked that memory in my head. What a wild family yeah. reunion that must I, be. I don't think that family reunions very much. No, probably not. I think not. she has very openly said that, um, that that is not a cousin she visits. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. I wouldn't. Yeah. Matilda's better than that. Uh, and the thing is though, that, um, Goebbels, 
the minister of propaganda under Hitler. When the Nazis took power, uh, put in a decree that banned the unauthorized commercial use of the swastika, which then basically took away all other usages of it in Europe or in uh, in Germany. Oh. And so it solely came to represent the Nazis and the and Nazi regime. Oh, dang. This is like, um, it's like issuing a copyright strike yeah, basically, <laughs> against yeah. everything else. Like you can only use this if it means how cool we are. Yeah, speaking of Nazis, Nazis, Walt yeah. Disney. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Walt Disney. Whoops. If you think about it, the entire Disney model for its first while was taking like public domain stories out of like you know uh, uh, Western canon, sure, and then turning it into a movie, which they can then copyright and then slap suits on anybody who tries to retell an mm-hmm. ancient tale that's been around forever. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways, don't at me, everybody. <laughs> Tristan has strong opinions about Walter Disney. Walt Disney being a Nazi is a long and total. It, it, it's obvious there, there, there's comp, there's complications there. It's a little bit more complex than he was a Nazi, but it's also not so complex that it's not that he's not a Nazi. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's the that's the way. I, I think that um, you mentioned it in one of your videos because it's about him being associated with the German American Bund, which I believe you did a little bit. Yeah, on. Yeah, I mentioned it in my video because you wrote that section in oh, my yeah, video. I that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I, I like. Yeah, that sounds like a thing I'd do. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Goebbels uh, really leaned into the uh, the swastika being the symbol of the party. Uh, it was on flags. It was on posters. The the, the infamous armbands and medallions all had it. So it became mm. like the symbol to represent the Nazi regime. And then after the war, a lot of countries, especially those that had been occupied or had been the Nazi regime, uh, banned mm. it. So like today, it's illegal to show the swastika in Germany which and Poland, which mm-hmm. honestly I get. Um, sure. And, and like I very, very often like uh, shows that need that want to show themselves in Germany will have to like censor the swastikas and stuff like that. It's. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's a whole that's a whole thing. And, and yeah, speaking of always sunny <laughs> gags at the beginning of this, there's that there's that episode where they find an old Nazi uniform probably would have to either not air in Germany or censor it real hard. Oh, boy. See, like the thing is, I, I wanted to like Always Sunny um, because I really like Mythic Quest mm-hmm. and there's a lot of crossover oh, between those two. But it's yeah. Always Sunny as a very different vibe. It's much more cynical yeah. in a way that I really couldn't I really couldn't get myself into. It's just what it's just I, I haven't watched it in many years. But yeah, it's just a show where everyone is terrible and you just watch them be the worst people imaginable. Mm-hmm. Mythic and, Quest, though. And, but nothing ever people, works out. Very good. Yeah. But then but obviously the big point of It's Always Sunny is nothing ever works works out for them because they're terrible people. They never succeeded anything. And that's what makes it fun. Uh, makes sense. Okay, but the thing is that this has led to this belief in a lot of Western countries that the swastika is a creation of the Nazis when it's in fact this ancient 5,000-year-old symbol and also that it's a symbol of hate, but it's also a symbol of peace, prosperity, and good fortune in many cultures. If you go to India, you're going to see swastikas on everything, including by groups like the one of the big swastika users is a religion called Jainism. And Jainism mm-hmm. is one of the most fanatically pacifist religions to ever exist. They're notable because they're hardcore practitioners where little cloths in front of their mouths so that they don't accidentally like suck in a bug or something like that. And like their monks will like sweep the street in front of them to not accidentally step on insects. And like they Mm. vegetarians, obviously, but also like obviously no smoking meats. Yeah. Some of them don't even ride on airplanes because of the possibility that an animal could get killed in the the turbine and stuff like that. Like it's it's intense. Uh, And the swastika is one of their big symbols. Also, the thing is that the Nazis never called the swastika the swastika that's not a term that they used and that's probably so something that people are commenting right now. was right yeah kind of interesting yeah the hitler and the nazis never called it the swastika it was only a thing that outsiders called it uh inside the party it was called the the hocken or which is german for hooked cross Sure. And uh, but the, and also the idea that it is uh, purely a symbol of Aryan identity. But it's uh, but of course, it's it, it, and the reality, the term Aryan actually also comes from Sanskrit, which means noble. And it's not associated at all with this kind of concept of a master race that never really existed. Mm. And so I feel like the Nazis have like have appropriated the symbol. And, and the thing is, like, part of me is like, at this point, I'm like, I'm like, this symbol has been unfairly maligned. We need to stop doing this. But then also to a lot of people, it is the 
symbol of stigmatization, hate, and genocide. And so like, this is the part where I'm like, I don't necessarily feel like it can be rehabilitated, but also it is one of the holiest symbols imaginable to over a mm. billion people. Like think yeah. about it, that like Hindus and Buddhists, like those are two of the world's major religions. And it makes it, in, it makes it really tricky too, because Obviously, you could just say, well, you know, context is everything, but then you'll have bad faith actors who will, you know, wear it, you know, or display it or something specifically to get a rise out of people. But then when you push them on it, they'll be like, I don't, whoa, 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 this is just like a symbol of good luck and good fortune. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You're getting offended by this. That's so weird to me. Yeah. Um, let's just say I know an example of people doing that in modern day, but one that is, uh, that would make me unpopular on the internet. So I'm not going to talk about it. I'll tell you Fair after the enough. show. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, the, the idea that um, like the promotion that these uh, that the, that there's like super uh, like an alien connection and not like a very like strict like linear connection that we can see in the archaeological record uh, mm. basically lets like the swastika stand as a symbol of the Nazis and doesn't give it its its wider context and other uses because it's basically what's the history it's erasing the history that this symbol was in Europe for a long time and that it is a uh, recognized symbol around the world in various spiritual practices mm -hmm. and it might if you don't understand those connections if you out of context see swastikas in like a hindu temple or a buddhist shrine or something like that you might get the wrong idea you know tristan this whole section is starting to sound like oh, the part yep, where yep. you make us sad yeah so you know what that means uh oh oh hmm yeah. So what happens as the result of all this? Yeah. I, again, uh, we are removing, we are erasing the history of mm -hmm. this symbol and its context within the Nazi regime, which returns to this whole thing that I've talked about on this show multiple times now about how a lot of this like connection with like the occult or Satan or aliens is a way to make the Nazi regime seem more foreign or, or more like, uh, uh, of a, of an exception than we like to think, which mm -hmm. is troublesome because the thing about the Nazis that we all have to kind of grapple with is that they developed from a very specific intellectual group of trends that were going on in the period that they existed in and mm -hmm. that were not that far away from the things that they did. And like, we're not that far away from the same ideas just developed in a different way. And right. trying to put the Nazis at arm's length gives us uh, uh, causes that exact same problem. Yeah. I also think that uh, as we got to talk about by by trying to undermine the historical narrative and the stuff that we have like developed and, and researchers have done, you are further trying to undermine institutions. And we've seen that there's been a serious corrosive effect in our like mostly because of the Iraq war, I would say, but for the war on terror in general, I should say. But uh, we have had a, a lot of loss of trust in our institutions and it has had quite a corrosive effect on civilization and conspiracy theories yeah. and these sort of like crank theories uh, feed that 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 corrosion mm -hmm. even sometimes if it's justified but there you go uh, and of course it's trying to uh, give some sort of legitimacy or legacy to an ideology that is terrible and is still being practiced by terrible people and to give it more grandeur and power than it actually deserves. Mm -hmm. So, and, and of course it's also feeding the us versus them because of the, the, the conspiracies yeah. do that. And it creates the connective tissue between extremist groups and people who are seduced by conspiracy theories. I, I think we talked about this several times now, but like the sort of there's, there's a really great statistic that shows that the number one uh, thing that will indicate that you believe in a conspiracy theory is if you believe in an another conspiracy theory. And that's because yeah. once you've bought into one, it will normalize that line of thinking that will move you further and further away from a shared reality with other people. And extremist groups like neo-Nazis know this. And so when they connect their ideas to the ideas of people who, if they have bought into those ideas, are already finding themselves more and more separated from uh, you know consensus mm -hmm. understanding of reality, they're more prone to buying into these things. Yeah. It, it, 
it works with Nazis. It works with cults. It works with Bitcoin. It's just like it's all it's all part of that same process of how you radicalize people who have because yeah. once you've fallen for one thing, it's more easy for you to fall into other things. And that's why, like, I come down so hard on like new ageism and like uh, and, and even like like there's some people who be like, what's the why would you why why are you like, you know, yucking people's yum if they're having fun believing in UFO stuff? And it's like it's because what, you know, it's because it can be a stepping stone to mm-hmm. to a lot of other yeah more harmful you know ideologies and as we've seen in this episode that a lot of these specific connections that ancient aliens is trying to make because they think it's interesting and would make good tv mm-hmm. is the result of active neo-nazi propaganda efforts to connect their belief structure with a, a popular thing which was which is like the uh you know the popularity of ufos the popularity of esoteric and spiritualist stuff and so mm-hmm. they are in uh maybe not intentionally feeding directly into that pipeline yeah yeah and even if it's not a stepping stone directly to those ideologies it, it we've talked i mean so much over the past couple of months of episodes that a lot of this new agey sort of thinking comes from you know nazi ideology so even if a person is like i'm just into crystals i don't know what you're talking about i i'm not actually actively participating in in this stuff it's it's also just it's important to remember where it all sort of stems from yeah that's Uh, and and also makes things like why did my yoga group get so into QAnon make a lot more sense yeah and that's that's the sort of key part to to um to walk away with i think as part of this Uh, another thing that you should walk away with is uh by following at um, props not aliens on twitter or ooh, blue sky i like that there's my you can follow for updates maybe i'll tweet a picture of that guy with the dog ears for hair his name is rail i i'll give no context i'll just tweet a photo of him uh on twitter and blue sky Tristan, mm-hmm. where can people find more of your stuff on the internet? You make videos sometimes. I do very occasionally. I um, I have a YouTube channel called Step Back where I talk about basically this kind of stuff. My last video is basically this subject about how the far right attach their ideas to... Um, how they attach their ideas to things that are popular in order to radicalize people. Uh, but I try to talk about it by like, you know, the lens of being a historian and an Americanist and, and, and try to give you an idea of seeing things in a bigger and wider context. Cool. Uh, Scott, I there have a- is one correct video that you can recommend. Yeah. So go, let's see if you did it. Scott, if I wanted to learn why Captain America punches a Nazi in his first issue, where would I go for that? Great question, Tristan. That is the video uh, on my channel, NerdSync, that we sort of teased earlier in the episode that you helped me write. It's about how comics have always been political. And there's a lot of talk about Captain America and a lot of talk about Nazis at World War II. And it's very fun and one of my longest it was it was at the time my longest video I had done. I've made longer videos since then, but it follows exactly what we've been talking about on the podcast a lot. But that's my channel, NerdSync, N-E-R-D-S-Y-N-C. I've got more videos coming out very soon mm-hmm. about uh very silly things. You can uh get episodes early, by the way. Ooh. Did you know this? You can get episodes early Neat. by supporting us on Nebula. That's nebula.tv slash probably not aliens. Mm-hmm. That's wild that we do that. Yeah. It's like time travel. Yeah. And if you want to uh, talk about how you find it very impressive that you can get episodes early on Nebula like that, you could do so by leaving us a review on any <laughs> podcasting uh Yes. Platform you can find. Apparently not Google soon, as of like April or whatever, but uh any other oh, ones. That's news to me. Do it up. Yeah, they're closing down Google Podcasts. They're just folding it all into YouTube. But uh oh, fair enough. But if you but whatever platform leave you us use, a review. leave us a review. It really helps. It uh we get emails about it all the time and I keep meaning to read them because I love that validation, but I haven't uh, It's very good stuff. Yet. You can also tell your friends about it. We won't get any validation that way because we won't know if you told your friends about it. Um, mm-hmm. but it does help us out. Uh say significantly and a really great place to send your friends is probs not it's got true. links to everywhere where you can listen to this show and that'll be it for this week mm-hmm. so until next time my name is scott nicewander i'm tristan johnson and the truth is out there what's a what's a swastika way to say probably prob probably Tr- let's do that <laughs> Thank you.
That is the wildest question anyone has ever <laughs> said out loud. What is a swastika way to say probably? <laughs> yeah, that sentences are, are strange, aren't they? <laughs> oh, what are we doing with this show? <laughs>